Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today two camouflaged chameleons are coming together in a colorful garden. So here's one in a chameleon and it's flip-flop and gleeful gardens. And this is a large slimline with sliders, the slimline simple stitched hillside borders in sage. And that's the slider, one of the sliders from that large slimline with sliders. And this is Lawn Fawn's acetate. And I'm really excited to be using this today because usually I use packaging for my acetate and uh, it's never fully clear. It's always kind of hazy or scratched. So this is a nice thick acetate. I'm using Stazon Jet Black ink and I have my Stazon cleaner ready to go because that Stazon ink really requires its own cleaner. All right, so I'm stamping straight down and I'm going to pull it straight up and that way it won't smear. But if it does smear, you can just take an alcohol wipe and clean off your acetate and try it again. So here is that cleaner cleaning that off, but it's a little oily. So I like to just get it cleaned with my water. And almost took out the camera going straight up to get the second guy stamped out. Here they are. They're going to sit to the side and I want to make sure they're nice and dry before I cut them out. So here's my hillside border and I'm just going to cut it to size and use it as a guide to stamp my flowers. I want the flowers to be behind that little hillside. I also have these stumps there. I was thinking I would have the chameleons sitting on the stumps initially, but uh, those stumps go away. So <laughs> disregard the stumps. I'm stamping with jellyfish ink, which is a kind of clear ink so that I can do some no-line coloring. And I'm also masking my flowers along the way. Here are the little mushrooms being stamped from Gleeful Gardens and then the large mushroom. And I use the tiny grass and I'll use the large grass as well. Now, did I have to mask everything? Probably not. I don't mind masking though, uh, so I did. The stamp lines will be covered with Copic markers, so you wouldn't see the, how the lines overlapped, but for me, it's easier to color or know where I'm coloring without extra lines in there. I'm taking a V01 and finding the petals on the cone flowers. I like these flowers. They could be black eyes Susans or just regular daisies, but they're going to be cone flowers today. It gives us some color in the garden. And I'm really just wanting to figure out where these petals are. There's two flowers here right together. So I'm giving them sort of an outline and then I will come back and put in the shading. So there they are, kind of mapped out. And we're gonna focus just on one flower, one big mushroom, one little mushroom. Um, I don't have the cap sitting out here, but that was a V04 and V06. And I'll come in with the darker V09 here in the darkest recesses of the petals. And coming back with the V04 to blend that out a bit and give it some shading up by the center of the flower. I'd like to capture all the colors of the rainbow and then some in this garden uh, because the sentiment that comes in the one in a chameleon flip-flop is you color my world. And that's what we're going to use today. So this is the V01 blending things out. And then I'm coming in with an RV52 to add just a ver variation in the color. And here's the RV55. So not everything is going to be colored with those RVs, but they just add a little something more than the straight uh, V zeros, the violets there. Coming back in, blending that a bit with the V04, and then shaping up some of those petals to make sure that that's crisp, and then blend things in further with the V01, and onto the center of this flower, that's a Y15, 
and then I'm switching over to the YRs, the oranges. So with the 21 and 24, blend that together with that Y15 next. Here it is. <laughs> and then my darkest will be this YR27. And I'll even put a little of that into the petals to give it uh, a depth. And then blend that in a little more, give it a little texture there. And I'm going to come back into those petals to blend in that YR27 that I put in there. Now this is the point where I'm connecting the center and the petals together so that they... They look like they go together. And here's the stem, it's a G12. And then I'm going to shade that with a BG72. I'm staying on the blue side of green today because I'm using that sage green cardstock as my hillside. I colored all of the cone flowers the same way, but of course each one looks a little different. That's kind of the fun of no line coloring. Uh, now it's time to start on that mushroom. So I'm using an R24. It's kind of a bright red to outline the little spots around the mushroom and I'm going to keep those white. Now an easier way to keep that white would be to come back with a gel pen and make white spots, but uh, this just seems more natural for the coloring that I'm using. And then this is a little unnatural. I'm putting a B91 at the base of this mushroom. And like I said, I wanted a real colorful garden. And adding this blue to the bottom just gives it a little bit of whimsy. Here's the B93 going up further into the red. And then I'm going to come over that blue with the R24. So red and blue make purple, but this is not very purple. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of just an undertone for that red, really. So coming back in with that B91, blending things out. I'm not expecting this to be super well blended. I kind of want it to have that, that look to it, um, that it's I got that blue edging to the bottom. I'm gonna darken up the top of the mushroom cap because I thought it would go, uh, it would be darkest at the top and then come down, be a little lighter as it goes towards the end. And then a little shading on that left side as well. Fun to have that unexpected color in there. If you look at the card, uh, when it's all done, you don't really even see that uh, blue very much. You see a red mushroom, um, but I, I just, I like how it gives it some depth and makes the eye look at it and just say, oh, something's different about that. I also like that because the cone flowers have that uh, opposite with the yellow and the purple, this gives a little m more of that same kind of look in a way, even though the opposite of red is green, but this gives it kind of just an, an interest to it. I'm going to pull out the R22 and blend it a little further. And I think I just kind of go back and forth between the R22 and the B91, deciding how much of each I'd like there. So, um, do, I do the same thing with all of those mushrooms, but they all have just a different amount of the blue at the bottom. Now, coming in to shade this, I picked up some of that red onto the uh, white of that spot with my cool gray, and I meant to do that. I meant to do that <laughs> because it, it just, I don't know, I think that it looks good there. But once I started on the stem, I didn't want that red to be picked up. And so I just did a straight cool gray and some E81 to give it uh, that mushroom color. And now I'm even coming in with that B91, give it kind of that same cast 
of color as is in the mushroom itself. Blending that in with the cool gray and then decided that I wanted to darken up the shadow of the mushroom. So that was the R89 and then blend that with the R24 and bring in some shadow with the C4 on the stem. And I'll do all the mushrooms that very same way. I've got some blades of grass here and there that I will color with the same colors, the G12 and the BG72 that I used on the stems of the cone flowers. Now onto those small mushrooms and they could have been red with a little bit of blue, just like the big ones, but I wanted to add extra color to make this garden colorful, and so they are pink. So RV02, and that was the 06, and I'm going to blend those two together with the RV04, and then this mushroom will also have a bit of a different edge to the bottom of it as well. And that's the R02. The R0s are a bit of an orange red. Now coming in with the R05, darkening that up. And then switching over to an orange. This is the YR21, which I used in the centers of the cone flowers. And just kind of making that very whimsical looking mushroom here. So I think we have the whole rainbow represented. We have red and orange, yellow in the centers, and green for the grass and the stems, and blue in the mushrooms, but we'll also have blue sky, and then purple in the cone flowers. So I think we did it. <laughs> Coloring in the grass with the G00, and then I'm darkening it up with the G02 and decide I can go all the way up to the G09 to get into the depth of those uh, blades of grass. And I'm just going to go back and forth deciding how dark I want to want to go with this grass. I, I didn't want it to overpower those flowers, but I also didn't want it to be too too pastel, I guess. All the grass was colored the same way and now time to add in the sky with a B triple zero and I'm using little circular motions instead of lines so that I don't have streaks for the background. As I was coloring I took the artistic license of keeping the top part white just for interest's sake <laughs> and I wanted to green up my sage hill so give it kind of a blue green to green look and so I'm using some distress ink in mowed lawn blending it on with a blender brush and it's time to bring those chameleons back on the scene so I want to partial die cut these two because I want to keep a stem on the bottom so there they are partially die cut and I'm cutting out the bottom part so that they can connect to these partially cut slider openings. So I just needed them part way for both of them because they're going to go from the edges of the card into the middle. I'm just cutting the rest of that off. And I wasn't extremely particular right there because it's under the hill. All right, well here I'm going to stamp out the sentiment, you color my world, and I'm using the sentiment right from the One in a Chameleon flip-flop stamp set. It's divided into two stamps so you can stack the sentiment or put them together like I'm doing for my design so it's going straight across. And that's the nice thing about Lawn Fawn sentiments is they're on rectangles. So they butt up together. You don't have to worry about spacing. It's perfect. I'm using some clear ink and I used an anti-static pad to prime that area so I wouldn't have any embossing powder go where I don't want it. And then this is Lawn Fawn's white embossing powder. I'm just going to sprinkle it on and tap it off and make sure I don't have any extra. And I'll melt that with my heat gun and it's ready to go. 
But this is going to be a slimline card. So it's eight and a half by three and a half. And I'm just scoring that on my scoreboard using Lawn Fawn's Teflon bone folder. So I don't get any of those marks that you would get with a plastic bone folder. I'm going to use some foam adhesive for my slider spacers and I'm doubling it up so I have a, a thicker or taller piece there and I want to just make sure that they slide freely in that slider opening and then determine where to put this chameleon on that adhesive. So I'm using that hillside to kind of de determine that. Place the other chameleon, so he's facing to the left, <laughs> and they're ready to go. I'm going to add some more foam adhesive to build up that hillside. I want to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the sliders, but that it gives support to that front of the card. I'll just add that where I need it on the bottom and the edges and then I will also add a little bit at the top between the two chameleons where they would meet. I used a bubble die from Scripty Bubble Sentiments to make two circles out of some thick white cardstock to add as my uh, stopper on the backs of the sliders. You can use pennies or dimes or or really there's lots of ways you could do that. Now I can add my hillside to cover that up and it's all set. Now normally with a slider you move the images back and forth like this but I thought it would be interesting or it just seemed more fun to me to move them from behind from the back and so I thought now how am I going to make this so that somebody could use the back to move the chameleons. So this is how it would sit on the card and I decided that I would need an opening on the top part of the card. I used a paper trimmer and cut out two sections for the openings. So I guess you'd say we're making a modified slider here. <laughs> and if I had known that I was going to do this before, I think I would have made my panel a little cleaner, <laughs> but I don't think the recipient's going to mind. But I did want to make sure that it was well held on to this card base, and so I used some double-sided tape so it won't come apart. All right, so does it work? Yes, it does. <laughs> there they are, sliding through the garden. But I did want to try to clean this up a little bit, so I partially die cut a rectangle frame and now I'm going to partially die cut it to the length that I'm looking for. So to partially die cut something, you just make sure it's stuck back in the track and have what you don't want cut hanging off the edge of the die cut machine. So here are my two rectangles and I'm going to glue them down and it kind of finishes it off a little bit better. So the takeaway here is if you need to cover something up, frame it. <laughs> All right, so it's working. It's great. I would expect that the recipient would know what to do, but I also have from you're just my type, a sentiment that says push here. And it's the perfect size, so I had to use it. And I'm using some black licorice ink and stamping that on those little circles there so they know to push here. <laughs> it just kind of makes it ev look even more like it's supposed to be this way. Well, there you have it, a modified slider, double slider card, and there's our little instructions there and our cute chameleons that are indeed taking on the colors that are around them and coming together to say, you color my world. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspires you to color up your world and maybe try a modified double slider for yourself Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.